Hello everyone, I have a really cool gadget device I want to show you. I'm in my Model 3 Performance and we have this thing by Test Logic. And as you know with the Model 3 and the Model Ys, they don't have an instrumentation panel unlike the S and the X do. So this is a really cool app. And right here you can see the energy consumption. Right now the AC is on, but let's, gonna turn, let's turn this off. And you see that I'm no longer consuming energy by the climate control. Of course, we can see the, um, the different uh, modes such as speedometer. Of course, you can see that uh, we're in park right here. And then, of course, the amount of horsepower I've used for this trip. We can go over here. We can see the G-Force because there actually is an accelerometer in the Tesla um, app because, or actually in, in the car because it rates you on how you drive for FSD beta as well as insurance purposes. Amount of horsepower right there. And then, of course, you get Google Maps as a way to see where you're going for navigation this is um this basically shows up when you're driving so there are some little bit minor tweaks they need to do in the app so i'm going to provide them a lot of feedback as well as some stuff like units could be changed which would be nice as well as changing the time from 24 hour to uh, 12 slash 24 times so a.m p.m so that'd be kind of nice to have so i'm gonna show you how to install this as well how easy it is to use so let's go over here. We'll put this back up right there. So I have a special mount right here. This is by Sexy World, which has a USB-C PD charging and I routed the cable through the back of the car. This is what comes in the box by Test Logic. It's a pretty simple box right here. So, and what it comes with. So it comes with three things. Obviously it comes with a splitter cable the transponder or the or the transmitter and then a regular mount for a steering wheel. However, people have mentioned that it'd be nice for it to charge the phone, but I have mine from Sexy World, which I will post a link in the video, which I got on Amazon. It's about 60 bucks, but this is better than nothing in order to use your phone effectively as a uh, instrumentation panel. So let's get started for, to show you how easy it is to install. Alrighty, we are here to install the Test Logic device and the instructions provided them are really simple and even I can do it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the trim out here and we basically need to remove this panel and remove this panel. So just grab your finger right here between here, carefully pull this plastic piece, put that aside. And then what you're gonna need this little plastic tool, which is not included, you'll just, yeah, although you can you probably just use your fingernails or something. You're gonna get into your teen right here and just pop this out, just gently. And then make sure you don't lose this because this is really important. And next we're gonna move a little bit more of this weather seal down here and then all the way up to this gap right here. And then you can just lift up gently. There you go. And then that pulls out from this way. So you wanna lift it this way because it's easier to remove rather than that way. And then uh, next, uh, make sure you don't lose this little foam block because that's really important. Set this aside and then as you see right here there is the cable harness that is included with the test logic device this is what the little box looks like it simply reads this data from the can bus this blue device and this other stuff provides power to some other auxiliary stuff um, so i don't know what it is but most importantly you just need that this device and then you're gonna need these uh these cable harness wires right here so it's just basically a y splitter pretty simple to do um so tuck that in there just to make it look nice. Make sure no wires are pinching. There are some other wires. There's a big red wire there. Don't touch that. That's high voltage power from what I, from my understanding. Plug this in here. It's got, it's everything is keyed. Tuck this wire in here just nicely. And then put that in there. And then just drop this little box right between the, the trim. So just drop it there. You're good to go. So the important thing is that there it's not invasive or anything like that. So if you do get your car service or you suspect they're gonna like get in here, you can easily take it out. So all you do is grab the wire uh, the wire cord and then just pull the pull the dongle back out. So like that, pretty simple. And then next we're gonna install the trim back in. So make sure that this is aligned, this little, this little panel. There's a little hole right there you want to align. And then make sure everything is pushed right there, flush with this. Um, push that down. And then um, we're going to put this little plastic thing back in. 
pop it in, boom, we're good to go. And then we align the weather seal from the door. Then this panel goes here. There's a little clip right there, a little, little, uh, little foam piece. Don't lose that as well. Pop that there and then it snaps into place. There might be a little bit of gap that pops out. That's by design. And then make sure this is all lined up. It's good. Make sure the door closes, closes softly and smooth. Look at that, how simple is that? So if you do it right, it takes about a minute or two to do, and then you're ready to go. Next thing is you're gonna wanna download the TestLogic app. You can get from the app store for free of charge, of course. And then, so let's see, what you do is you quit out of this. And it's gonna look for the transmitter. Give it about 10 seconds or so to find it. Boom, right there. So when you first wanna pair it, I'll say, would you like to connect to it? And just press pair. It's kind of interesting. There is no password for protection on this. I guess it doesn't really matter because nothing is being transmitted back to the car. It's just transmitting to your phone just to read the information. So there's not, I guess you don't really have to have any security, but if you're security conscious on that, I guess they could add that in maybe in the future. But yeah, that's pretty much it on the installation. So let's go for a little test drive so I can talk a little bit more about this. Alrighty, so here's the application screen. As you see, the turn signals are pretty much in sync with what you see on the main Tesla screen. They did a really good job in terms of how the application latency and what the information showed is almost near real time. So we just switched over to the accelerometer and instantaneous horsepower screen. So on the left side is your accelerometer. I think that's in terms of G, so G-force. And basically the G-force and what you see on the accelerometer is meant for, I believe, diagnostic purposes. So it's for um, Tesla insurance as well as FSD beta qualification. So if you kind of give hard turns or sudden braking, that may affect your driver score for FSD beta. And then of course on the right side, you have your instantaneous horsepower and that will change based if your car is providing more power to the motors or using regenerative braking. And then of course in the middle screen, you have your zero to 40, zero to 60 and quarter mile seconds. I don't know how to get those to display, but maybe your car has been in track mode. And of course the max horsepower I've used for this current trip. All right, so now we've moved over to the energy consumption screen. So anything in yellow is um, delivering power to those various components. So uh, climate control, there'd be battery heating, others would be like headlights, uh, maybe the onboard computer, uh, something like that. And uh, you'll see pretty soon that we're gonna uh, accelerate and, and we'll see that the front and rear motors are being used. So it's interesting because Teslas are all wheel drive, but however, um, most of the time the rear motor is engaged mainly for efficiency purposes. Um, this, by the way, this applies for the long range and the performance variants of the Model 3s because the standard one is only rear wheel drive. So the front motor engages for a little bit more power when you need it. Okay, so this is, uh, yeah, so now we're in accelerating right now. So both motors are engaged. You see how much uh, kilowatts are being used for the motor and as well as there was for the front motor. You see the total percentages for each components that has been used for the total drive. And of course the battery is heating. Um, it just wants to provide a consistent performance as the batteries need to be at a certain temperature for the system to perform correctly. And then now let's switch over to lanes. As you see right there, uh, we're just trying to get on the freeway so we can, so I can show you uh, more uh, different features of the application. So I'm gonna engage autopilot shortly. Okay, there we go. Autopilot is engaged now. And so now, here we go. So a little bit more features of the application. It's kind of weird that there is no toggle mode for um, dark and light mode. Hopefully that, get, that gets fixed in the newest uh, or future releases of the application. Okay, yeah, here's Google Maps view. Uh, so yeah, it basically provides another view uh, just on a dashboard so you can see kind of where you're going if you have your other screen filled up 
with other stuff um, when you're driving. This is just the main screen right here, your speedometer, uh, how much horsepower your motor's doing, and your savings, and then your current trip. And, uh, and this is all in terms of uh, US units, Imperial units, and then just switching over to the different screens for um, the instantaneous horsepower and accelerometer. So you saw right there, I did want to pass a car and I want to show you how much horsepower this car can produce pretty much at an instant. So I almost did about 450 horsepower right there. So the max horsepower recorded was 430, but you just see how quickly this car goes. Just an insane amount of horsepower um, for this kind of car. So just getting some more cruising footage, stuff like that. Now back to the energy consumption. Pretty easy to switch over between the two. Okay, so we see that the screen has turned to dark mode. It basically uses the same data from the Tesla screen or information from the CAN port in order to tell the application to turn to dark mode. So at the moment there is no toggle mode as I brought up before, so hopefully they can address that. But I think the dark mode looks a lot slicker and easier just to read and a little bit less distracting, I would say. Um, so very contrasty, looks very modern and sleek. Okay, here's a view of Google Maps and just a different UI right there. Energy consumption, horsepower. Oh, there's some personal information. We're not gonna swipe over to the, to the left more. Um, now I'm gonna show you uh, what the screen looks like when you're charging your Tesla, as it looks pretty cool and how that functions. Okay, it is nighttime and here is what charging looks like. So we don't have the two motors in the car. We just have the power input source, which is uh, about 74 kilowatts. And we went to a 72 kilowatt charging station just because it's the closest one by in my place. And the input is from the station directly and the middle part is uh, showing the battery and that's how much power the vehicle is accepting and the battery is heating because I haven't actually conditioned the car to accept supercharging right away because I just left my place just to go here, just to get kind of this video done. Uh, there's climate control course, that's probably for the car and for some other stuff right there. Battery heating does use quite a bit of power, it goes up to 10 kilowatts I believe for that. Uh, when the battery has reached temperature, the power input will match what is advertised for the super charging station. So yep, here we go. About 72 kilowatts of charging. Battery is pretty hot, 142 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's go back, here we go. Uh, and that's pretty much it. It's pretty straightforward, it's kind of cool. Nice to have the screen on when you're watching something or doing something else and you can't really see how much you've charged. All right, let's just wrap things up. So that's pretty much it on the application. I would say that this is pretty good for the first try and the current update of the application. Of course, there are some bugs. I'll put those in the video description. Um, but overall, I'm a very happy customer. Got it at a good price. I would recommend buying even at the final retail price. It's just a really nice thing to have for your Model 3, a Model Y that doesn't have an instrumentation panel. Uh, installation was super easy to do. So yeah, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know. And as always, have a nice day.